everyone. Um, thank you all for being here. I'm just going to read a little something from my phone. Um, I just wanted to say a few words before we start. So I'm Valencia, my pronouns are she, her, and I am the director of Perda, working with Heifel. Um, woo! <laughs> and I believe this is the first Pride event at non such for the season. So happy Pride! <laughs> We started this project back in April. Uh, we had like five days of R and D, it was kind of a playground R and D, um, where we explored early play concepts through co-creation. Um, we united artists at different stages in their career uh, to experiment with scripted work and improvisation, and look at how relaxed collaboration and non-hierarchical spaces um, could have a place in the queer arts. So. This co-creation aspect of this project is just as important as the work you're going to see tonight. And it's really nice to see a lot of our creative mentees in the audience today. So hello, thank you for coming. And so after that five-day R&D, um, we took a little break and Evie, our lovely writer, went away and wrote for a month. And we landed back here on Tuesday <coughs> with bits of a script which we're now going to share with you as a sort of uh, script in hand sharing. So some of the scenes that you'll see today are spoken, just spoken about rather than actually displayed because we haven't actually act actualized them yet. Um, and I guess what you will see is very much a work in progress. So it's just to give you a flavor of what's to come within the project. Um, this is quite a relaxed evening, a relaxed event. And after the sharing, um, we'll have a short interview, interview, interval, <laughs> and we have some feedback forms that we'd love you to fill out, if possible, because that's what we're all here for. Um, there are QR codes over there, feedback forms that will be with the front of house, um, and there's also post-it notes over here, and a lovely blank space. So if you have any words or anything that pops up for you and you just want to whack it on there, that would be really, really nice. This sharing contains strong language, depictions of bigotry, mention of suicidal ideation, electronic sound, flickering lights, and some atmospheric sound. So if you have anything that is slightly triggering for you, you have complete autonomy to leave the space and come back in. The exit is exactly where you came in. Please feel you, you can do that if you need to. Um, Throughout the project, we have been very, very lucky to receive support from Nonsuch, um, from Nottingham Playhouse and the Arts Council. So I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of them because it wouldn't have been possible otherwise. Um, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed the sharing and yeah, I'm going to go sit down. <laughs>
one ladylike. A year which has included seismic changes to global politics with Brexit and the US election and of course the greatest changes many of us have experienced in our lifetimes. Who knows what the next 12 months will have in store for us. All that's left to do now is wish you all a happy and healthy New Year. Welcome everyone. Can we please give a huge welcome to the wonderful, the one, the only, it's Miriam! Oh, morning. Oh, morning. Oh, morning. Oh, yeah, so everybody, um, the upstairs lot is struggling with team this morning. Oh, so we're going to have to... Fabulous. Yeah, sorry, can you actually hear me? Yeah. Yeah, morning, we can hear you loud and clear. Oh, that's <laughs> choppy. Yeah, sorry. I can hear you, Dave. Sorry. Right, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. We like to have a bit of fun, don't we? Great. Anyway, as I was saying, we're so pleased to have you here with us, Miriam. Wait, sorry, I actually didn't catch what you were oh, it, It's Miriam. Miriam, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know your mum would be so it's proud. It's Miriam, mum. Dave was just shouting at something. I actually think you're on the phone. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, everyone, everybody, I'm sure we can do introductions at another um, time. Emma, hi, uh, that's Ivan, but he's frozen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. yeah. Uh, thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah, as I was saying, your mum would be very proud of you, Miriam. Why does she keep going on about that? I tell you, she used to work here. Works up the room now. I, I think you were the one who, who recommended I apply for this job, actually. What, me? That scheme actually worked. From a small town to a big job centre. Emma, you were top of our targets for that provision. Well, that's what it's all about, gang. We are here to help those less fortunate than you find a job to better their lives, build a sustainable career, to benefit society, and then go on to help those less fortunate than them. Can we have a big round of applause, please? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did I, you just let me know if you need everything, Miriam, yeah? Oh, thanks. Right, thanks, Dave. Um, I hope you don't mind me saying, Miriam, but this is particularly special for me because I knew you as a little girl, remember? Well, I won't go into it, gang, but it's a lovely story. And um, I hope you'll all make her feel really welcome. You know, I was about your age when I started working here. Yeah? God, I'm old. <laughs> Might be time for some Botox. Oh, oh. <laughs> Emma, you are cheeky. <laughs> Dave says I'm not 21. I actually said 25, love. Oh, you're still 25, you're short of the <laughs> Emma, I'll be having words. Uh, anyway, listen, um, we haven't got long, but I wanted to give you a new chance to give the new girl a chance to say hi. <coughs> But I hope you don't feel like the new girl that is. No, Miriam. Everyone is really lovely here, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Sorry? Your speech, love. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks for picking me. <laughs> I, just, I just really want to do my bit to, to help. Yeah, uh, tell them a little bit about what you did before. What you were telling me in the interview. Very exciting. I was, well, uh, I worked in theatre. Oh, are you an actor? Yeah, kind of. You should be on Coronation Street. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, well, I love everything personally. Could you get into that one? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, you're working here for now, isn't it, love? Yeah, I started here thinking I'd keep up the songwriting. 15 years on, I'm still here. <laughs> she sometimes sings at karaoke on a Friday. Yeah, shut up, Dave. Oh, don't be dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she's really good, Lydia. Oh, uh, okay, lovely. Uh, Dave, 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 I've murdered for that coffee. All right, we're going to go over to Emma for the fun uh, home lot and upstairs lot, if you can hear us. Listen carefully, there's been a lot of mistakes recently. Right, okay, uh, nothing <coughs> to report, 12 changes, sanction process is the biggie, just follow the questions on the system, uh, we have to make sure we journal them and document how many times we try to call, otherwise DMs can't follow the process. Mm, yeah, they're starting to pull us up on that one. It's all, it's all on the internet, uh, give it a read, let me know if you have any questions. Oh yeah, I don't have access yeah. to the internet well, also, yet. Please, can everyone just dip into the journals because some of us are doing it more than others. Uh, it's still at about 1300 when I checked this morning. Thank you, Emma. We do appreciate it. Uh, Miriam, Emma will be your buddy, so you can sit in on her calls for today. Maybe even do a few calls yourself. Exciting. Oh, I think I'm actually on training today. Okay, I can get good to speak. Bye. Yeah, bye. Okay, yeah, you know where I am if you need me. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. One moment. I nearly forgot. Dave! Is our Dave out there? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> there you go. Oh, thank you. you are good. <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to say congratulations to our Dave, who has just become a granddad. <laughs> oh yeah, thanks. <laughs> There's a little shit already takes after me. <laughs> oh. oh. Opening the doors now. All right, everybody. Doors open, doors open. You know where I am if you need me. Right, I'll bring you into my first call, Miriam, but go for a fag first. Do you smoke? No. Give it time.
through the darkness of night times between January and February, the computers speak to each other, echoing in the empty job center. Computers screams fizz and crack like a storm brewing. They update their systems with the political going ons, from extending the 20 pounds universal credit uplift, the backlash of a sex sexist government ad, and announcing that local elections will go ahead as planned. It's Tuesday, 9th of February, 2021. We see Miriam in the last day of training, acing their final role play test, still struggling with the basics though. They ask Sharon's advice and are met with Toff, the job center's areas manager's mocking response. <laughs> Oh, uh, didn't they cover that in the training? Oh, they did, but... The taper rate is the way that we measure or calculate the universal credit that someone is entitled to. Oh, it's down. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's basically a process whereby you come into the job centre three times a day and one of the security guards measures your head. Yeah? <laughs> three times, obviously, to account for any bloating. <laughs> Keep writing. Oh, once the average measurement is established, we then use a very complex algorithm equivalent to a shit magic trick, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, yeah. to calculate the amount of universal credit that you will receive. Yeah, um, Miriam, uh, this is Tom. Just ignore him. Yeah. Hi. New girl. Uh, yes, new girl. Hi. Yeah, hi, new girl. How are you finding it? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, you have to be strong, resilient, quintessentially British, power to the people that the car knows best. Servants sitting in the nest, mother hen clucking her way to a frontline job. <laughs> I'm here to help. Exclusionary, illusionary. Do you know what numbers do to me? Frontline <laughs> job. I'm here to help. Uh, look, I've got those numbers for you. Let's head to my office. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, I've been going to the gym. Oh, you can sell very toned. Uh, what was the colour of your first car? I've been bench pressing. Oh. And what is or was your mum's first job? How's she been? A nice girl, but doesn't talk much, does she? Uh, thank you, that's great. And I'm into your account, so how, how's the job search been going? Well, it's different. Uh, creepy, isn't it, without the customers? Why don't you just work for us? Oh, you know I can't. Slower pace. It's going to get bad in here soon. Oh, it's fine. Everyone's being so dramatic. Oh, do you remember that customer that said, call me Mrs. Peacock from now on? <laughs> well, she said, I don't want to take his name because he's a... <laughs> well, it's just still as exciting, you know. A stray dog came in and shut in Sharon's office last week. You're lying. <laughs> but, uh, uh, cross my arm. Uh, uh, and what kind of things have you been applying for? I, I can see from your commitments that you're, you're mostly interested in Is working in manufacturing yeah. or maybe the office of the big man. Is she in trouble? Oh, Natalia, I'm not getting involved. Okay, okay. And what, and what has made you realise that? She sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, see you soon. Listen, don't forget. Yeah, I, I, I won't. Uh, okay, is that because you have any particular health condition that we need to know about? Or oh, darling, are you well? Oh! <laughs> yes, thank you, Toffee. Listen, I've got to dash emergency meeting. Another one. Bless you. And I'll see you next week. <laughs> Okay, okay, so so in order to receive universal credit, you need to be able to prove that you're Tell looking me. for work. What? Like, like what? Well, we all know how you got out of here then. And, and have you heard of at all? Or... Hello, Natalia! Sharon! Hi! <laughs> I've actually just popped by to say hello to Miriam. Oh, uh, that's really nice of you. But as you can see, we're pretty busy. I can see that. Yeah. Bye, Dave. Or oh, bye, trouble. So, so you, would you be on the yeah? Would you be on the payroll, or would you invoice for your work? I want to change it. It wasn't like that. Okay. Oh. So that is self-employed. 
So you would need to register as self-employed by going into your account and pressing reported change and then earnings, and it will ask you questions so that they, you can notify us that you're now self-employed. You can shut the doors now, Dave. It's 4.29! <laughs> it's fine, shut them. <laughs> Over a month later, it's Wednesday, 18th of May, 2021. We've already had our team meeting, but you'll just have to get the PEG team to update you. Look, there's a couple of changes, nothing major. Uh, just follow the options that the computer directs you to. There's um, some new security questions. It's all voice activated. And there's some new boxes to tick when you verify a customer. Yeah, oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah you know where I am if you need me. <laughs> Uh, no, no, just stay on the line. 
time for me. Um, um, I'm, I'm trying to connect with Polly. Um, so Tom is still working from home. Okay, okay. Uh, no, no, that's okay, don't worry. Uh, would you be happy for me to contact them? Uh, I, I could bring your GP. Where is it that you're registered at? Do I have permission to, uh, to bring your GP on your, your behalf? Okay, I just need to make a note of that. No, 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 stay, stay on the line for me. Um, sorry, uh, no, I'm sure there are lots of people that would miss you. No, no, no I, I will try and help you. I can, I can switch off your commitment, so you don't need to worry about that. Stay, stay there for me. My co oh, my colleague, I, my colleague Keith has responded. Hello? I think the line's gone. Dave, Dave, give me Keith. Hello? Hello? Or swim, sometime in autumn. The office swells and pulses, people pushing in and out, in and out, in and out. Mare is in the smoking area. They listen to a voice note from their mum. Hi, Miriam. I'm just. Hi, love. Hello. You're not answering any of my calls. Why aren't you speaking to me? I just want to say that I don't really get it. You can't just change your mind one day and decide that you're not a boy or a girl and you can't be cross with me forever. Mums aren't allowed to get cross, do you know that? Something about a mum getting cross is unacceptable. It's not motherly to shout. Mothers have to be nurturing and caring all the bloody time. I'm sick of it. You're my little girl. Well, not little. No, I'm not saying you're fat. I'm just saying that all you have been since I birthed you is a girl. I gave birth to you out of my literal vagina. 7th of July, pushed you out, still sweating from all the pushing, on the forms, filled out, female. Can we just talk about it? Well, I'll keep trying. Perhaps I should start a podcast. I tried that, um, my favorite murder one. I think it was awful. I don't even think you might be a psychopath, my love. What kind of favorite podcast? <coughs> You'd be able to think of a good name. Well, this feels fucking stupid just talking to myself. Um, look, Oscar's just stopped. Just started waiting outside the house again in a shitty Audi. I don't think he knows I've spotted him yet, but he's been there a couple of times. I'm going through stuff as well. I just really like to... she knew the current was so strong. I've always been a little preoccupied with suicide. The Bell Jar being one of my favourite books since I was 13. The image that Sylvia so cleverly conjures of her attempting to pull herself under the sea and not <coughs> being able to, popping up like a, a cork over and over again. I also love the sea. I'm a water baby, through and through. Wateriest sign there is, cancer. And I refuse to believe NASA's bullshit about how our star signs have changed. It's just a publicity stunt. My palm reader at Disneyland told me he had no doubt that I was a Cancerian, so that's not proof I don't know why. <laughs> he also told me that once I'm in the flow of prosperity, it's boundless and endless, but I don't think I've like found my flow. I've always thought that if I killed myself, it would involve the sea, because I'm happiest when I'm at the beach. My 
first kiss with him too. Something about the sea makes me feel religious, or maybe it's, it's the horizon where the sea meets the sky. The number of times I've looked up and seen the rays beaming through the clouds like they do in famous paintings into the shimmering sea and burst into tears saying a prayer to my dead grandma is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> It's like an automatic thing. The light makes me emotional. I didn't, I didn't want to tell my mum that if I'm quiet for too long and she notices it's her goal to get something out of you like belligerently beating a rock with a stone. How stupid would you feel if you had to explain every time that the toast is burning It just is. <laughs> it's burning. I just realised, in a moment of stillness and darkness, I, I faced myself for the first time. I just knew it's something had changed, and there was no going back. From the chip shop next door, I can see a lady looking out over the river too, and I wonder if she's thinking the same thing about the current. It's just so quick. Like life moves too quickly, like life gets taken like too quickly. I think I'll go for a swim soon. It's hot out here and I want a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday, 8th of December, 2021. Bitterly cold morning, 8.59 a.m. Morning, all! Oh, where, where, morning! Where is, where is everyone? Oh, oh. I, I brought along a very special guest! A special guest! Has he been deep? Yes, checked. Oh. Um, I've misplaced my tape measure! Don't worry, don't worry, I've got mine! Oh. Hello! What a fine establishment! Oh, you're the lifesaver. So, uh, the idea is to double our desk capacity. We've marked it out already upstairs, but we haven't had the chance to do it down here yet. Uh, Sharon, this yeah. is... Alexander, local MP. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I'm full steam ahead, sorry. Hello. I love it. I love getting hands-on. Hands-on in the community. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Right. Serving the people. Um, okay. Now listen, if you just... Yes, sir. Ah, ah, thank you. <laughs> okay, hang on. Yeah. You just... Okay. Right. So that is... Oh, do you see where that... Uh, sorry, can you just pass me that? Uh, it's, 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 no, it's, it's actually... Uh, actually... No, actually... <laughs> yeah, well, just to quickly say... Uh, sorry, I'd actually just like to say I'm really pleased to be here with you all. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yes, I'd really like to keep to the uh, yeah, budget and spreadsheet. Schedule. Uh, yes, uh, let's yeah. just stick to the. Uh, you actually got it the wrong way round. Yeah. Oh, your belly just touched my thumb. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we already have plans. Ah, the whole layout. I've got it. Oh, how many people? From this point to this point, you can legally fit in 2.35768925 tables. We'd have to round that. So, 2.35768.9 tables. Get someone really small, both thin-wise and height-wise, to fit into the small desk. Uh, that'd probably be a woman! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes, women! Small! Small! You! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is, in fact, actually the manager uh, of this place, so she's technically required to have a room that she can close the door to due to the nature of their calls. Ah, uh, yes. Period woman stuff, I'm sure. Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's make it a man, if we can, for diversity reasons. Yes, yeah, stick it! Do we even a chance for the Civil Service Awards? Maybe a dwarf man in a wheelchair. No, no, no. That actually uh, defeats the point. It needs to be a small person that can fit wheelchairs notoriously. So could not fit. The new lift is working like a dream though, yeah? Running very smoothly, recently installed, accessible. <laughs> well, no, no, we actually haven't even tested it out yeah, yet. We could genuinely stand a chance with diversity and inclusion awards. Ah! Dwarf black man with learning disabilities. But, <laughs> great! That's great! And then we can take that quota and get off. Oh, uh, uh, great! 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 Uh, great. Yeah, can we give me my tape measure back, please? This is nice! Uh, yeah, it's, it's very expensive. Uh, a gift, gold plates, it's been worth a few hundred thousand pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Have you thought about investing that money into the local community? 
and training projects to boost jobs and empower individuals to achieve their full potential despite entrenched socio-economic barriers and systemic classism. Alexander program the computers and begin to give our orders to Sharon and the team. The office has doubled the desks and is decorated with balloons and bunting. The clock ticks. A conveyor belt of people line up and take a number. This scene is to be developed in collaboration with each venue that we tour to to create the bespoke show. Emma, Sharon, Mayor and Dave are all helping customers played by local artists. Doors open, here to help. Can't help, you have to help yourself. Doors open, here to help. Can't help, you have to help yourself. Doors open, here to help. Can't help, you have to help yourself. Doors open, here to help. Can't help, you have to help yourself. The big day, the Diversity and Inclusion Civil Service Awards. Thursday, 7th of July, 2022. The office is immac immaculate apart from Mayor's desk. Mayor has cut their hair short and Sharon isn't pleased. They're in prep mode for an event happening in the next hour, ensuring that they bring only the easy customers in. Mayor and Emma have a heated discussion around Mayor's mental health, queerness and privilege, with Mayor confiding that they're gender queer and that it's their birthday today, but they don't want anyone to know. We learn that Mayor is seeing someone and that they haven't spoken to their mum, Natalia, in a long while. We hear them leave a voicemail to someone saying, let's do it today, confirming the time of the awards. Mayor then accidentally smashes their phone. We also see Sharon starting to crack under pressure. Right, Miriam! Yeah. Uh, 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 Dave, Miriam wants to be called Mayor now. Right, Speedy, uh, are you expecting anyone today? No, no, I cancelled all my appointments because they're all difficult. <laughs> sorry, sorry, no, no, they all have complex needs and they're supposed to be all very easy to go. Oh, well, there's someone here to see you. Who? Oh, it could be my 935. I tried to call them to let oh, me know. I can get rid of them. No, no, no. It's someone special. No, I don't know them. Oh, you dear. It's your mum. Surprise! Why me, Erin? I didn't have much choice. You're the 
security guard. She's up. She just wants to talk to you. I didn't know it was your birthday. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Miriam. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to you. Natalia, oh, such a special day for us all, isn't it? The Diversity and Inclusion Civil Service Award, can you believe it? Uh, but we really can't have life flames in the job centre. It's so. birthday. Yeah, oh, birthday. Oh, please. you didn't say. <laughs> oh, she didn't say anything. Well, on our big day of all days, what a coincidence. Miri, are you going to blow the candles out? Miri, Mia, are you going to make a wish? What flowers? Just go on, blow them out. Seriously, someone needs to extinguish the flame. Come on, I'm going to the job centre. Mia! Mia! Oh, she's gone. Oh, thank you. Well, I, I do. I love the rainbow. It's a very, um, with the LBGT plus AIQ. Hey, hey! Hooray! Hey, hey! Hooray! What place for everyone? Well, actually, um, Alexander, our MP, is arriving soon, so we better save the cake cutting until after the award. I know who Alexander is. One slice, one <coughs> her. For the birthday girl! Yes, Mom, I'm oh. fine, I'm fine. For the birthday person. Uh, <laughs> I had to rise it out with them. What? About Mia being queer? You and me both. Did I say that right, darling? Uh, 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 no, um, <laughs> about their birthday. Uh, they are weird though, that's for sure. It's fine, it's fine. What's all this? Uh, no, no, it's nothing, Shannon. I'm gender queer. My pronouns are they them. <laughs> oh. My son was telling me about this the other day. He's gender fluid. Is it like that one? There's 105 <laughs> genders, Dave, so no is the short answer. It's all about letting people self identify. We live in a very binary tick box world. Either we keep up or they'll go on without us. Look, uh, I'm all for the battle of the sexes, but um, you know, we don't have time to go into all this. Oh, God forbid that we jeopardize the diversity and inclusion award by talking about gender identity. <laughs> <laughs> Look, everyone is accepted here. Hmm? And for you to imply otherwise is simply wrong and unprofessional. You know, they picked me specifically for my work, champion minorities. Miriam, I can get you a pronoun badge if you like. It's Mia. <laughs> she wants to be called Mia. <laughs> <coughs> Let's call the cake. Oh, oh yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Is it chocolate? Yeah. I'll put the kettle on then. Yeah. The matriarch rises. We're left with Sharon alone Excuse for the first- me, love. I'm the matriarch, so do you mind? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so as they were saying, we are left with Sharon. That's me. Alone for the first time. Sharon breaks form and can now talk to the audience directly. <laughs> Shattering the fourth wall. <laughs> and they're going to criticise them all for their despicable and disgusting voyeurism. Still Mia tries to take back control of the narrative, fat chance, but then concedes, and Sharon sings a ballad of Mia's opening song. <laughs> but there's not the budget for that in this little sharing, so maybe next time the two of you cop up your bloody funds, you know what I mean? Do you think I'm going to pay my rent with some match funding? I don't think so, darling. <laughs> But now it is time for the Diversity and Inclusion Civil Service Awards! All right then, let's get this show on the road. Local MP Alexander arrives with press played by local artists. Throughout, Mia has changed their mind and is trying to get in touch with someone to tell them not to come in. Alexander, 
thank you so much for coming to share this incredible moment with us. Why, if it wasn't for your nomination. Oh, the big boss around here, aren't you, Karen? Keeping them all in check, I hope. Um, <laughs> Thanks so much for all your hard work and the, and the rest of you here. I've heard so much about your wonderful work on the numbers. I mean, whoa, they speak for themselves, don't they? You know, you file the, the reports weekly. I don't personally read them, but I know they do get read. And, 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 and distilled and diluted down to the numbers that we use to share in the parliament. Mm. Um, thank you, Alexander. You know, we care about each and every person here. But of course, fundamentally, yes, and you made the crucial point that people are what matter. It's the people, the people, power to the people. Uh, ah, yes, yes, united in a common cause to get that next job, <laughs> the, the, the step on the ladder, the paving stone for the next chapter in one's life. Are you getting all this for publicity? Ah, great for exposure. <laughs> Not like that kind of exposure. <laughs> Not exposing, exposure. Being out and about dialogue, being out and about with the people. <laughs> well then, we had hoped for a couple more national newspapers to join, but you know, it's hard to drag them away from Westminster. Oh, that's not right. And who are these lovely ladies rocking these very funky hairdos? Yes, yes, let's get a picture with you. Yes, and you too, relatable man of the people. Me. Okay, uh, um, Mia, Emma. Uh, that's it, everyone. Gather round. Uh, Dave, come on. Oh, no, no, no. Just these two. Uh. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, that's, we can get uh, the group shot when we're outside for the ribbon cutting. <laughs> <laughs> smile, smile. Oh, no, no, we can't do that anymore. Oh. <laughs> uh, now, uh, and then I'm saying, Jobs! Jobs! It's for safety reasons. Oh, really? Yeah, scissors. Uh, big no no. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh. Besides, you've actually been open for two years. Great, uh, great, lovely pictures. <laughs> Thank you. Alexander, Alexander, do you have any thoughts on uh, whether the current Prime Minister should step down? Uh, uh, excuse me, relevant question only, or you will be removed. You've all been briefed. Shall we head upstairs and see the rest of the building? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kieran arrives in some time. <laughs> this is the person Mia has been seeing and met through an appointment at the job centre. We learn that they've been planning to reprogram the computer system. The computer announces that Boris Johnson has just stepped down and Alexander comes running down those stairs. We're not open today. You can't be here. Looks pretty open to me. A public place paid for by the taxpayer closed for some kind of party. We want to help. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you fucking people say, isn't it? You don't do shit. The computer says this, the computer says that. No fucking brains in your heads. You work for the biggest pig on the planet. But he's gone now, hasn't he? And you're all running scared because people have had it all. Uh, this kind lady will, will help you out. A, a food voucher, perhaps. I don't see any kind ladies around here. Do you? Nobody wants a fucking food voucher. Full system reboot is required. 
on making work that is blunt, daring and funny. Through improvisation, movement and a love for new writing, we set out to bring new stories on a shoestring budget to fringe theatres, mostly across London and Edinburgh Fringe. Um, fast forward to now, returning to my hometown of Nottingham, we are Arts Council funded on a project by project basis and have just registered as a community interest company. <laughs> this particular project launches us as a CIC because it's in keeping with all of our aims I wanted to share with you now. To platform historically silenced voices and stories through co-creation projects, to empower and create space for underrepresented artists, to create new pathways into the arts that unlock creative potential and combat low isolation for marginalised people, to champion well-being at all stages using creativity and performance to boost confidence, develop communication skills and empower young people to advocate for their needs, points of views and opinions, to provide employment and pl placement opportunities for early career creatives and young people within the arts, empowering them to take leadership roles and build a community. And finally, to be informed by a robust well-being approach cultivate cathartic experiences and projects that unite marginalised communities and voice social and political changes needed in society. If you want to find out more about how you can support Mind Out Theatre, then please follow us on social media. You can scan the QR codes that you will have seen around the space. Thank you. And now I'm going to pass over to Vanessa. <coughs> I'm going to use my phone if that's all right with everyone. Uh, my name is Vanessa, pronouns she, her, and originally I kind of came in as a creative mentee, and a creative mentee was uh, essentially a role that they created to kind of uh, support and um, help cope, essentially just with co-creation, everybody in the space together, throwing, uh, throwing in ideas and whatnot, and um, so we would come in uh, for two afternoons, uh, four hour sessions each time, and uh, we'll just come in and kind of play and kind of explore the themes that were in the script. So just even Queer Joy, we had an afternoon looking at that and what that looks like in the space. So that was originally what um, I came to do and that was essentially my experience. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So I was also one of the creative mentees, my name's Amelie, my pronouns are they, them, and we're just going to read a little sort of Q&A session. Yes, hello. Um, I thought both the writing and the performances were so characterful, um, it, although everyone was bouncing between lots of different roles and sort of lots of different moments in those characters' journey, I thought everyone portrayed them really, really well, and I thought they were really well written, so I'm sort of excited. If, if these are the... the the stepping stones in the river. I'm excited to see the full bridge that is going to be made from them. Lovely message. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Yes, hello. Hi, um, I knew that it was kind of talking about the kind of mundane, kind of everyday queer experiences mm. rather than I'm in crisis or this is wrong or mm. like all that kind of stuff. That was Um, so I'll move on. We have I have a few questions for you guys basically until we move on to asking us some questions. But um, something else we wanted to find out was um, are there any moments that 
stood out to you specifically, maybe sort of a whole scene or just a, you know, a specific thing that one of the actors did or just any moments that stood out to you uh, watching the piece? And feel free to elaborate if you'd like to or just tell us the moment. Yeah, the, so the, the PC police, um, <laughs> like, that could totally be a song in its own right. Like, I was expecting a song to bloom there. I think for me personally as well, because I, I was here during the um, initial R&D, so I saw little snippets of things there, and um, I mean, everything has developed so much since I saw it, but like the song specifically, the song at the beginning, I feel was a really like standout moment and mm -hmm. almost didn't really exist as a song when we first saw it. So mm -hmm. that was like a whole new development, which I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and it, it was quite typical of the sort of musical format to have mm -hmm. that song that kind of sets out what was to expect in the next mm -hmm. hour or two hours. Definitely. The writer mm -hmm. of the song, of the composer, uh, Jack Dylan, is here. <laughs> <laughs> Police being a song because we did think we, we hoped that will move in that direction. Yeah. And there's another little bit that we did um, oh, doors yeah. open here to help. Yeah. And I love that yeah. song. Catherine's little bit where you do as oh, top, yeah. you just yeah. with the tapping. Yeah. And you have a few yeah. words, and that's just I feel like that could develop a yeah. lot as well. That was yeah. really funny. I enjoyed that bit. Um, yeah. So it's one bit yeah, I like as well where uh, where Sharon takes the mic, which <laughs> I know it works particularly oh, okay. in the context of the showing because there's the there's the reading through the the scene content but it was like a it, it's really nice when you see a character who's like not the subject <coughs> who's like not the lead protagonist saying this part is my story as yeah. well which i'm sure in the greater context of a piece is, is always quite nice because nothing's ever like one person's story is it yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Uh, were there any other moments that stood out i think everybody loved and oh stuck um, mm. moving slowly movement that you did. Another thing that I wanted to ask is, was there anybody in the audience who maybe um, connected to a specific character or a specific story? Um, tell us a bit about why, or maybe there was just a particular character you thought was really funny and that's why you connected to them. Um, I'm an old woman who's not genderqueer, and I connected to everyone. I mm -hmm. thought the characters were really well observed, um, they were truthful and genuine within the humans that were portraying them. Um, they drew us all in rather than made us feel like we weren't welcome. Um, and it's it's everyday people. It's people that I see and meet and converse with every day. So it's, it, you know, the subject matter is really intriguing and engaging and the characters really deliver that for anyone that's in the audience. I was thinking it's, it's an intergenerational audience that can really get on board with this. Mm -hmm. Coming from anywhere with any sort of thoughts on anything, I think it's really welcome and inviting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think, yeah, I totally agree with that. I think, like, I personally really connected with Mir, but it wasn't, like, even specific to their queerness. It was just, like, the fact that somebody mentioned, like, the mundanity of it and seeing queer people, like, in a sort of just a true existence. And I think that was really easy to connect to, whether, yeah, whether you're queer or not, or whether you work in a job centre or you've never had that experience. So, yeah, I think they're very well-observed characters, as you said. Um, anything else for that question? Yeah, tell us. I, I don't really like going out to public speak, like, in front of everyone like this, but I am literally a drum skipper as a surgeon, so... Ah, yeah, that's good. Like, yeah, um, yeah, it felt like a little bit uncanny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, nice. I appreciate yeah. it, I a little bit of representation in that, so, mm. thanks. <laughs> well, yeah, that's easy, so... Yeah. <laughs> I think the... The character of the mum was mm. originally so frustrating to watch because it's recognisable in a lot of people, but seeing the way that Mia looked at their mum when they were kind of having a slightly redeemable moment, <laughs> like trying her, hopefully her best, even even though it's still kind of far off, was really relatable to see having mm -hmm. like a, a parent who seems like they are trying. 
Yeah, yeah. But they're trying, they're not they're quite there. Like they're, they're, they're doing yeah. a lot wrong, but they're, they're kind of on the way to, to getting there. Mm-hmm. It's like, because a lot of the time, I mean, in the majority of queer media I see, it's either the good parent or the bad parent, and mm-hmm. where normally most of us end up with the in-between parent yeah. that's, that's so confused and so trying to get there, but it's, it's like so far off. So it's nice to see that. Yeah, that's so, you put yeah. that so well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And I think redeeming is a really good word for it as well. Like, it's, I don't know, in that way, I feel like it's becoming a piece that's um, more like uniting than divisive, which yeah. I do think is what we need in mm-hmm. theatre and like culturally and stuff, and especially marginalised identities. So it's really nice to have characters that are, I don't know, like kind of fucking it up and getting things mm-hmm. wrong, but like trying. And mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's a real achievement of the piece. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, off, off the back of that, I actually thought um, the character of Dave stood out mm-hmm. really yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're learning and they're trying, but they weren't as immediately connected mm-hmm. to like, the main character mm-hmm. going through that. So I really enjoyed that because I felt like Dave could be, oh, no, my dad, my dad, my mm-hmm. friend, like, just yeah. enthusiastically trying, I really, yeah. that's really like that. I think we're seeing that, hopefully, a lot, like, increasingly at the moment, is sort of, maybe the people you're around are just empathetic and enthusiastic, and they don't quite have the words yet, and they don't quite have, yeah. like, the knowledge yeah. and the terms, yeah. but they're trying, and I think Dave very much embodies that. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, the, like, most of the characters, to be honest. That's really social cool. cheerleader. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Annabelle's been caught in the way he literally moves among the characters yeah. and yeah. mixes it up and mm. it's a good device. Yeah. Mm. Also, Mir is like, Mir makes mistakes and like makes yeah. wrong assumptions about people mm. like quite often, which is nice as well. So yeah. Yeah. Everyone, everyone's doing it. Yeah. 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 Um, the last thing, which I think we've kind of discussed quite a lot, but are there any additional points to make around the message of the story in general? Um, and what do you think that message is? Um, I think there are lots of layering answers to this question. Mm-hmm. But yeah, does anyone have anything they want to share? Hello. Um, I know we like mentioned the song, which was great in the beginning, uh, by the way. Um, but I would have loved to hear the perspective in a song at the end, mm-hmm. just to see where she's at. Like after that, moving forward and mm-hmm. what her like their voice is mm-hmm. at that time. I think for me, yeah. I was like, oh, just wrap everything up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, yeah, once the story's moved forward and sort of like, oh, where is mm-hmm. what's her voice now? The one that's mm-hmm. private and mm-hmm. um, so I don't know if that's obviously tailored. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. I also feel like the. The opening song is like, and that's why I love it because it's so angry. Mm. But it, it, like, anger is also like exhausting, right? And it, mm. I don't know. You kind of hope that Mir would find a, a point where they're not so angry all the time, or like mm, just find yeah. a bit more like peace. Like, yeah. it'd be interesting, like musically, where you could mm, go yeah. with that. I'm very interested to see the challenge about how you take this into the mainstream. Mm because you've got a very understanding audience yeah. here. Yeah. And so the next step is to take all of this and actually see, I, I, I wrote on my comments mm. form, peel back the onions slightly more, mm. because I think there, there was an understanding audience uh, and, and just to take it that little bit more for people who aren't quite in that terrain to yeah. really understand it a bit more, but it has potential to blow the socks off everyone. It yeah. really has. Yeah. How long a piece do you see this being sort of in its final form? I think I'd like for it to be like a two act mm. piece um, that does have songs throughout. And, mm. But it's not like a musical, it's like a dark comedy with music. So mm. just slightly different emphasis. And probably, I don't know about running time, but like, like two hours? Two, two hours, two, two hours Solid and two fifty yeah. with an yeah. interval, yeah. something like that. Solid two hours, but not like dragging, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, um, I was just going to say, I really enjoyed the physical party. I thought mm-hmm. that was great. And, and one, one part when uh, part of your intonations, it reminded me of Moira from Shit Creek. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's 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 that's
Um, well, if that's all the thoughts for now, I thought maybe we could go down the line and just introduce name, pronouns, your involvement in the piece or your role, and then we can open it up to questions from you guys. So I'm Amelie, I was um, a creative mentee on the project, so um, I'm sort of an emerging actor, director, creative, we'll see. Uh, my pronouns are they then. Uh, I'm Catherine, my pronouns are they, them, and I was a uh, performer and theatre maker and divisor of the project. Hello, um, my name's Rhys, my pronouns are they, he, or also she in drag, um, and I was a performance maker, actor on the project, and also kind of um, with a sort of sound specialism that kind of came in. Uh, and yeah, in my other practice, you know, I'm a performance maker, sound, sonic artist, sound designer, um, and drag and cabaret performer. Hello, my name's Vanessa. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I originally came on to uh, the piece as a creative mentee and um, also a performer now. Um, yeah, just me on top. <laughs> I am Jay. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, and I'm an actor, model, and all-round icon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also came onto the piece as a performer and theatre maker with a background in voice, movement, and character. Nice. Hello, I'm Valencia, um, pronouns she, her, and I was a director on this project. Um, I'm a director, performer, and theatre maker, and producer. Um, I just do a lot of theatre things, basically. <laughs> nice. I'm Evie, pronouns they, them. Right, but she's a performer, and I just wanted to say that if you do want to follow people on social media, then creative team like bios are also on our website, and you can scan and go straight there. Thank you, everybody. Um, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask, generally or to specific people? Um, so, question to everyone, and then sort of specifically at this end. Um, <laughs> What do uh, you as uh, performers and divisors sort of feel the takeaway the audience should be getting from the show is? Uh, and then how does that change and develop from what the initial conversations you had about the play was? So my initial takeaway when I first read the script, what stood out to me and what I really liked to focus on was the metaphor of a computer um, and the metaphor of a system and you know the direct reference to the systems as well and how non-functioning it is how close to the end of itself it is and how easy it can be to break so in my what i first got reading the script was a sense of optimism in destruction if that doesn't sound too negative it's just like how easy it is to just break all of it yeah i agree with everything you said jay and maybe just to add to that i guess i i, I I think increasingly I'm more interested in like the the idea of um, the different layers of being an ally. So a flawed, um, well, the difference between someone who isn't an ally is actually actively <coughs> a bigger, um, and then a flawed ally. And you know, I think I don't necessarily know if we knew that from the start, no. but that has grown and grown and grown. Yeah. And I think it's been really essential because it's uh, like. You know, I'm really pleased that people have picked up on it's it's helped so that the characters are likable, and so you go on the journey and you kind of stick with them, hopefully. So yeah, I guess I I hope I for me I, re I reckon the takeaway would be is, is like I don't really have the words for it yet, but like just have a go at being an ally. Like we forgive you for getting it wrong. Just yeah. have a try, and that's how we'll all, and also like just bringing like marginalized groups together I suppose like you know I see you I see your struggle you see my struggle now like I don't experience your struggle but if we work together to fight the ultimate bad evil then we can get a bit further so I guess it's like that and I think that ties into the system and yeah and that could also like exist within queerness you know there are different levels and different ripples and, and ways in which um, queerness exists and you can be a flawed ally within a queer spectrum, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So it's looking at the intersectionality of it, you know, I'm talking as like an elder, 
elder queer here. Um, I, there are things that are consistently you have to learn or have to get on board with or have to adjust. And it's, I think particularly speaking with, with younger people um, during this project and the, the creative mentees, um, for me it was particularly like just amazing how comfortable everybody was with themselves and how forthcoming everyone was with themselves and sort of reflecting back on my own personal journey or my own experience. Um, and I guess I didn't really expect that from, that's more of the process as a whole, yeah. um, but it definitely, I think, shows within the work. Yeah. yeah. It, it kind of builds on that front, like, a, like the timeless piece, mm. like as things develop and your conversation starts to change and mm. younger people come up with fresh ideas about queerness and mm -hmm. boundaries and how they stretch. Mm. You can almost also that thing of like rebuild and start again rebuild and mm. um, like demolish and start break again down demolish, and break down start again and so how what i suppose something that we haven't been able to pick up on just yet is like the interaction between the computer world and the yeah. and the, and the queer world you know like kind of <coughs> converge and how does one like affect another and mm. so that's something we'd be excited to find and that out. is ai that uh, ai is such a thing yeah because and then it's the fourth industrial revolution, right, which seems mm. particularly poignant for this job world that we're mm. doing with playing it. Mm. Yeah. It's going to have massive. Yeah. yeah. I think maybe the computer, computer could do a profile of each of the individuals. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of people out there that won't understand where they are in terms of their kind of understanding of the queer agenda. Mm -hmm. And maybe there could be a kind of Scott Pilgrim spotlight on individuals to say, you know, where, you know exactly who, who you are, where you are, and, you know, some, some are at the ridiculous end of it, some are at the kind of understanding end of it. Yeah. Something like that, you know, picking up on the AI stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe more voice for the computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other thoughts or questions from the audience? I just want to say thanks for making it, because it's just really <laughs> yeah, nice to come and see something like this and representation. It's pretty special, I have to say. I don't know, like, because I worked in a job centre and I also realised I'm genderqueer kind of at the same time. So I can't tell you how like cathartic this experience has been. I feel like I have got to a point in my day to journey where I do feel quite comfortable and happy. And so actually being able to do this has felt like really, really, really fucking awesome, basically, just to like reclaim that narrative. So yeah. Um, and also it feels very special to have, you know, another civil servant here. And yeah, I want to chat to you. <laughs> so there's just one thought I had as, as you were speaking where I thought the, the, the strength of the sort of administrative characters like having the MP and having the person who sort of oversees everything mm -hmm. is they're almost like they are an othered character mm -hmm. where like a lot of the, the public discourse around queerness especially trans people mm -hmm. as being like this amorphous idea mm -hmm. that people just like can easily oppose because it's like because it's like such like not a non-specific thing mm -hmm. having these sort of very binary institutionalized people be that sort of kind of the this is just a vague idea of the sort of ridiculousness of the institutions we currently have is just like such a nice flip to see mm -hmm. which is why i think especially with the whole tape measure bit like it's it's <laughs> physically very very funny to watch but having that flip of like yeah this is the game that you've been playing for ages and mm. yeah it's been that was quite satisfying to watch mm. Mm. Nice. do any queer people or anybody in the audience have sort of hopes for the theatre industry and are there is there anything that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i mean do you have any like specific hope for uh, when you come to see a, pe a piece of theatre like this uh, is there something you're expecting from it? Is there something that you hope um, sort of pieces like this can give to you? Does that look like a coherent question, Helen? Yes. It's not an expectation, just a hope that it will be just a normal character is queer. Mm. 
so much to explore with that because like ultimately that relationship is like completely inappropriate like yeah <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. it's so um, unprecedented it's totally like not okay like then starting that relationship but then also it's like i don't know i feel like even in that small bit of dialogue it's capturing j just like when you just have a need to like be seen by someone mm -hmm. and i feel like kieran just sees me for who they are mm -hmm. and just, that's why it's like just such a like intense connection yeah because you're just in this space where you're like Ooh, like feel like constantly like not seen mm -hmm. but yeah it's like very <laughs> very interesting yeah like where it's mm -hmm. where it's gonna go but this yeah th there's a lot to explore there with like power and stuff because it's like mm -hmm. Inappropriate on paper, but then like they are just two young people who have a connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because that's the other. That's the kind of the other interesting thing. So Mia's character is, Mia is 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 a kickstart work coach, and maybe we need to do a bit more about like what that means. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a, it's a sixteen so. to twenty five year olds who specifically it was like a provision for sixteen to twenty five mm -hmm. year olds. And what's interesting is that Mia becomes a kickstart work coach 
when they're like 24, so they're still in the age bracket. Mm. And so then they meet someone who's the same age as them, and it just suddenly feels like, oh, like, what? And we want to kind of explore like which side of the desk yeah. um, are you going to be? Like, we haven't been able to delve into that yet, but like, yeah, figuring out like you could easily be either side of the desk. Yeah, like whether you're the service provider or the service. Yeah, the yeah. yeah. It's interchangeable like so quick. Uh, we probably have time for one, maybe two more questions if anyone has got anything that they would like to add. Yeah, hello. Um, I'm quite interested in the kind of co creative model that you approach, how you approach this. Um, interesting how the mentees have felt that their words or their contributions mm -hmm. have gone into the play. Has it felt that it has been? absorbed within what you were discussing here in the early stages and, mm -hmm. and has that developed and will you then in the next stage take that on board as well that kind of co-creative method in terms mm -hmm. of developing the story, the story further mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's a great question i i would i would really love to like that's the that's the aim i think something i'm really passionate about is that co-creation isn't an add-on it's not like you know, it's not like you need to have this amazing show and we're going to do some workshops for you. Here you go. It's kind of actually more like, okay, we've got this thing. We'd like to hear your thoughts on this thing. And could you tell us like what else you'd like to be in this thing? Mm -hmm. So to your point, I think it, hopefully it's about like trying to embed the same level of co-creation into the next phases. And what that looks like, we don't know yet. I think maybe it's about fun independent, of course, all that stuff. Like, is it about having maybe hubs in each location that the show possibly tours to? And, and we have like a, a local, um, you know, local community, both from, from many different backgrounds, because they have lived experience of being <coughs> on national credit, maybe they're queer people, people affected by the system broadly, coming together, talking about the show, and then maybe there's like moments within the play that aren't firm or set, that can be uh, pulled apart and like inserted in and like, well actually in this particular job centre appointment, I want to talk about this problem because this is relevant to our local area. Mm. So yeah, so that's kind of like a hope. It's very expensive <laughs> <laughs> to, to do co-creation well, I do feel it's expensive. Um, so if you know anyone with like millions of pounds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, to um, quickly answer your point about like, as one of the creative mentees, like our work was definitely taken up. Mm -hmm. It was like once you were in the room, it was literally everyone on the same plane. Yeah. And I think they everybody did that very effectively. Obviously Valencia and Evie were sort of leading on that. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's expensive because we were paid and that's such a brilliant opportunity that like doesn't come very often to be a young person and to just be put into a professional environment and say, We value your work and we value what you're saying. Um and I think, and that's obviously why it's so expensive, but at the same time, if it was, if it was just, you know, expenses paid or something, that would still be so valuable because it's the experience um, that was, I mean, Vanessa, you might be able yeah. to say something. Um, just on top of that, um, when I came and it was like, oh, this is your role, creative mentee, mm -hmm. I didn't actually fully understand what it would be like in this space. And they, um, both of you made it so welcoming and, um, off, off the bat, your opinion was valued, like your words mattered and um, every little thing we, we discussed and we played and we just explored. Um, even with our performing, uh, our performing up to today, we were still, everybody was still feeding things into each other or um, just as a piece as a whole. So it just felt really empowering and also kind of, um, as, as an actor, as a performer as well, just to have a group experience where everybody is putting in the same work, everybody is equally involved, everybody is equally respected. That was amazing. Like it just the experience alone, just being in that room with that was incredible for me. Yeah, I think that's a really good note to end on. Thank you very much. So um, we've oh, very slightly run over, but thank you everybody so much for coming. Thank you for your contributions and your questions. And let's just say. Thank you and well done again to the performers and everybody involved.